Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I always get stressed out when I have this many tabs. So many things <laughs> can go wrong. Before I start, Iron Sights 3, Impossible Starts 2 combo campaign. Um, you don't have to order both of them together, but if you do, you save 10%. I'm going to start building the campaign for Jawbreakers Forever, which launches on July 4th. And for the first 24 hours of the campaign, Jawbreakers Forever, <laughs> a graphic novel, that has already been drawn one dollar yeah that's one dollar so uh anyway before i start or no i already did that part uh icv2 comicron comic sales report for 2021 came out yesterday i did a video already about the uh sjw's dunking on chuds instead of you know going to their uh bosses and saying like hey so uh best year ever supposedly like the best year since the 1950s maybe uh one percent raise i don't know nothing they never they never do that and they never they never try to capitalize in a way that will gain them capital uh money they try to get social capital uh so anyway um it came out and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, there's like 20 tabs so anyway um uh comicron is run by john oh thank god it's on the screen john jackson miller and he's a good guy um, I'm always shocked when I'll ask a question and he'll just pop up in the comments and answer it like a normal person. Like he doesn't treat people like they have cooties. He will just clarify. Like uh, a few years ago, I think two years ago, I was like, hey, your um, category for crowdfunding doesn't seem to match what I see. And he's like, well, I don't count the money that you guys uh, take in for um, postage. He's, he, he would just basically try to guess what the actual cost of the book was. So I was like, fair enough. And also, holy shit, you just answered a question. That's amazing. That being said, I do think he always <laughs> uh, looks on the sunny side of life in a way that I don't think is uh, fully accurate. Uh, that's that, okay. That still sounds that sounds like I'm implying he's dishonest. He's honest, but he's always going to give the happiest perspective on things. So you see here, the 2021 Comicron ICV2. ICV2 is a great website. It is so boring. <laughs> you can't help but trust it. I always say this about Heidi McDonald. Like, Heidi McDonald, your job is to be a journalist, which literally means your job is to not be corrupt. Spell check will correct spelling. All you have to do is not be corrupt. So when you're a corrupt journalist, you're literally failing every single part of your job. I was saying to a friend, I was like, if Heidi just rebuilt herself as freelance public re relations, I would have zero problems with her. That, that's fine. If someone with public, public relations wants to, uh, you know, uh, get four reasonable questions, ignore three of them because it would make her client look bad, and then answer one, but in a very gaslighting way, purposely misconstruing what you say. Hey, that's fine because it's public relations. People understand you're being paid to make the client uh, look good. Um, with When you're a journalist, your job is to not be corrupt. So Heidi is literally failing 100% of her job. Uh, ICV2 is not corrupt. It's also not... In it's interesting if you... It's not interesting, <laughs> but it's dependable. You go there and you're like, I bet this guy watches the crop report. Like whoever makes that is just a very simple, honest, probably lives in the Midwest somewhere. Very boring guy. Whoever, I don't know who makes that, but okay. So um, uh, is out and it's a blockbuster. Comics and graphic novel sales rose 62% to $2.075 billion, up 70% versus 2019. All formats grew. Uh, the industry's biggest year ever in dollar terms, even adjusted for inflation. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to bury the lead. What's happened over these last few years, especially these last couple years, is they started tagging in. When you say comics... To most people in America, they think Spider-Man, Superman, X-Men, Captain America, Batman. That's what they think. They don't think Raina Telgemeier. They don't think Dogman. I mean, hell, I 
almost feel like in like three years or less, Curious George is going to be considered a comic book. It's like, well, it's, it's words and pictures. That's a comic. Even like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. If you want to be technical, it's a sketchbook. Like it's literally supposed to be a kid in school doodling and then writing some captions. And they're like, oh, it's yeah, okay. Okay. So, all right. So you want to call that a comic? Is Curious George a comic? Are all Doctor... What I'm saying is they keep adding more things into what is considered a comic. Uh, a friend of mine was pointing out, he's like, you know, if in the 1980s, the comic book industry would have been allowed to include like Garfield, The Far Side, Doonesbury, Bloom County. Everyone forgot about Bloom County. Bloom County was the shit. It's stuff like, if you were able to put like Charlie Brown and just Garfield, like it would just, all these modern sales would look like shit. Um, so they're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like the industry doubled in one year. No, you doubled the amount of things that are considered to be comics and graphic novels. That's what you did. Graphic novels exploded with manga having an enormous year. Yeah, no shit. Traditional comic book also rose dramatically, surpassing 2019's pre-pandemic level. Digital grew less, but still far ahead of 2019. So, um, uh, yeah, I expect digital to shrink a lot next year. So, the deal with comic books. Now, comic books does not count manga, except for in the very rare cases where a manga is made into a floppy. Back in the 1990s, like, they would do that with, you know, Crying Freeman, Sanctuary, which was my favorite, um, uh, all the Shiro stuff, it would always be a floppy first, somewhat awkwardly, you know, because first of all, it was flipped for American audiences. And then like, it, it wouldn't end on a cliffhanger. It would just end. It would just be like, okay, that's 20 something pages. It's, that's done for this issue. Uh, some people want to say that manga is in there. Manga is not in there. Manga isn't here, here and here specifically, but comic books, it's still like stuff. You would go to the comic book shop. Um, here's the problem. Okay, so graphic novels doing amazing. That's manga. That's dog man. 2021 topped any year in comics history in inflation adjusted dollars. While early 1950s unit sales were higher, it was all magazines, a dime at a time. 2021's comic formats have a wider range of price points. Basically, he's saying back in the day, you used to get a, you know, a good cheap comic book on newsprint. And there were so many of them. Now they just cost a lot more. Um, so our annual reminder, while some manga use... Okay, so he basically just said what I said. That the most of the manga sales are in the book, not in the comic book. Let's see if there's anything else I missed. Okay, oh, I gotta read this out. Again, don't contact these people. Just remember when Comics Hate or Ethan Van Putz tell you that, quote, woke comics are dying, that, that comic sales are terrible, and that the industry is in decline, that they lie every single time. Phonies, liars, that's all they do. Lie and bully, lie and bully, and repeat. That's mental illness right now. <laughs> it's mental illness. Uh, so anyway, um, this is on their own page. So this is where it's, you know, it's the same graphs. But the, what I liked about this page, oh, it wasn't this one, whatever, who cares? Nothing matters, everything's broken. Uh, <laughs> so then here's the uh, actual report. And um, this is the thing that I have an issue with, no pun intended. Changes to the analyst methodology for estimating sales through comic stores after big changes in comic distribution and, okay, blah, 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 blah. They're using Comic Hub. You, you might say, what is Comic Hub? Well, Comic Hub is this thing. It's a point of sale. There, there's different options. You got retailers, you got distributors, publishers, and stores. This one is for the customers. It's basically like, oh, you can know what you bought and you can organize it and, and you can order it through your uh, local store if they work with us. Here's the problem. 135 stores worldwide, about 100 in North America. They extrapolated the sales of the comic book, the floppies, the analysis, the analysis now uses data based on sales tracked at point of sale by Comic Hub. We have used that data to build a model of sales for the entire comic store channel using comparisons developed during periods in which Comic Hub and Diamond reporting overlapped. Here's the problem. 
Who is using Comic Hub? It's the retailers who have the money to pay for Comic Hub, and uh, who have you know who have, you know they're not using a cigar box or an old style cat. You know they got a nice tablet out front. It's going to be the more successful stores for the most part. So it's like basing you know crowdfunding off of what you know me and Ethan sold. Like that's not an indicator. So that's why you get these massive jumps um, uh, from 2019 to 2012. It's 2019 were actual you know numbers because there was one distributor back then. Now there's a couple of different distributors and there's guesstimates. Okay, so I get to click that off. Uh, so here's another thing. This is uh, when I really started collecting comics. G.I. Joe 13 from 1983. Cover price, 60 cents. This That would be $1.76 right now. Uh, the average cost of comics in the top 300 in 2019 was $4.03. Two years later, it was $4.33. And um, it's then I also got this one. Electra Lives Again came out in 1990. It was $24.95. It's the equivalent of $53 right now. Okay, so I'll click off all of those. Click, click. Oh, wow, look at me. So uh, I did this, uh, I, well, I did two polls today. Uh, one, I realized that I, um, so I said, as compared to your buying habits in 2019, I was using their same, they keep going back to 2019, which is fair enough, because 2020 was a weird year for the entire uh, industry. As compared to your buying habits in 2019, the year before the pandemic lockdown, how many books are you buying in stores now? The problem was, I didn't establish that number one, people, that this was only, Basically, I should have clarified and said for people who are going into comic shops in 2019. So that's what I, so this one, it said like compared to 19, 2019, uh, people are buying zero comics, but it's like a lot of those people were buying zero in 2019. So I clarified, I said, I love how enthusiastic you all are about answering polls, but I realized that my phrasing could have been more exact than it was in my previous poll. This poll is only for people who went into the comic book shop on a weekly basis in 2019 and bought on average at least one book per week. For that specific group, how have your current buying habits changed in relation to what they were in 2019? 5% are buying more, 8% are buying the same, less 32%, zero 55%. As you see, these are actually quite different results from when I didn't clarify about that. So. This is what I've noticed because one of the things, uh, do you think uh, the boys and Top Gun Maverick were popular, are popular right now? Why do you think that? Is it because Deadline.com told you it? Or is it because you have overwhelming evidence from your peers, from your coworkers, from your family? They're just bringing it up. They want to talk about it. They, they know you are interested in comics. They're like, oh, you're into comics. Are you watching The Boys? Oh, I, I, I got caught up. They're excited. Nobody has to gaslight you into thinking that Top Gun Maverick was popular. It made huge at the box office. But moreover, you're just hearing about it constantly from your friends, specifically your normie friends. Top Gun Maverick is basically Avengers Endgame for normies. <laughs> like all the normies came out of the woodwork to have that thing make a billion dollars. With uh, uh, the boys, it was more niche, like the first couple of years, and then this is the year where it really became mainstream, it, and it's, it's a much better season. You don't have to be convinced that this season is doing better, that, you know, that Top Gun did better than the original. Like, it's out there, it's overwhelming. If the uh, increase in floppies was 23% in two years, there would be 23% more YouTube channels covering it. There would be 23% you know, more views on the YouTube channels reviewing comics. Have you noticed all the people who reviewed comics in 2019? They're not doing it or they're barely doing it. People who used to review one, two, three comics a day. Now, every few weeks, they'll do a medley of, you know, here's five comics I read in the last month. That's it. You know, even people like uh, Thinking Critical, he tends to do more of these, you know, this is a bunch of books we read, or this one was really good, or this one was really cringy. But remember five years ago, 
there were multiple popular channels reviewing new comics every si- a new new comic every single day. It doesn't exist. If you go to the chatter on TikTok, people are talking about the boys. People are talking about you know, a little bit of MCU. If they're talking about comics, they're talking about collectibles. They're, that's that's what's popular right now. Back issues. The reason that there is a 23% increase is based on extrapolations off of 100 stores that are most likely doing better than the average store and then the variant cover. Variant cover, they always like to do this gaslight. Well, variant covers existed three years ago. Yeah, no shit, but it wasn't like, it is the main effort in comics right now. So I'm sorry, Heidi McDonald, the North American comic book direct market. (laughs) government name comics 95% of the time when I say comics you're thinking about the North American direct market it is it's not just like hey every now and then that is their main bread and butter every single day divorced dentists who go buy a a, you know one of one out of a hundred cover for $125 and the way they get that is the rule is you got to buy 50 80 100 of the not special cover to get that one in a hundred one. Actually, you'd have to do one in a hundred. Okay, you understand. And they have all these different tiers. And then somebody, who was it? I think it was Ethan pointing out that one of the things that happens when you do 12, 20 plus variant covers, as Marvel has done for recent Spider-Man and Iron Man books, is you got people who will go in and buy every single cover. We're not getting more people reading comics. We're getting less people spending more on comics this right here to me is a gold standard right there um when you do uh uh what do you call it 22 pages of story and that's what it was back then for 60 cents now they could sell it for that cheap because they were going to sell 300 400 500 thousand so i think one day this year i'm going to really crunch some numbers and it's going to be you know for every a uh, uh, thousand comics sold divided by the cover price divided by the book and I'm gonna come up to, with some golden ratio and see if I can make that work with my own comics which are crowdfunded which are more per page because it's a smaller market somebody who did that somebody did some analysis somebody I did a video on it and they said it looks like there's about 6,000 people that regularly buy uh, crowdfunded comics um, so you know 6,000 versus 600,000 or even probably back in the 1980s it was a million customers that would regularly buy comics and then you know I mean G.I. Joe did great at getting 30, 40, 50 percent of that market at the time. So you're going to be gaslit a lot. I did notice something interesting. First of all one of the usual suspects literally said I'm not going to dunk on this. I'm literally just going to mention it. I'm not going to be snide. So you have these stores that are like, comics are doing better than ever. No. <laughs> Stranger Things uh, Stranger Things uh, memorabilia is doing better than ever. The boys, you know, uh, back issues, uh, the boys' uh, trade paperbacks are doing better than ever. The new comic books from the North American comic book direct market, nothing. It's nothing to them. I see these store owners are like, those chuds saying, and, but then they'll do another post where it's like, I'm my only employee. You saw that Brian Hibbs saying like, comics are doing great, but I'm going to close my other store because it's too much work to hire people to replace those that are quitting. What the fuck? And you get these ridiculous claims. It's like, oh, we would order more comics, but it's so confusing when there's three distributors. There were more than 20 in the early 90s. <laughs> all this is bullshit. It's all a flim flam. Uh, the sales for um, the graphic novels, those are a lot more dependable because most of those uh, are tracked by book scan, which is legitimate. It's a legitimate source of information. So when you see those um, uh, book channel numbers, those are good. But the, the numbers for floppies, that is is just fake news. It, it's fucking bullshit. Um, uh, and those numbers are pumped up by uh, corrupt journalists. Uh, who would be actually non-corrupt if they were public relations. I suggest it's you're not even changing what you're doing, Heidi. You're just accurately describing your job. You're not a journalist. 
And if you are, you are one of the most, if not the most corrupt journalists in the history of comics. If you rebrand yourself as public relations, you will probably make more money and I will have no problem with you doing what you're doing. Because what you're doing right now is public relations. You're just lying and saying that you're a journalist. So before I go, Iron Sights 3, Impossible Stars 2, Combo Campaign. Um, this one is... i got to make a decision. Hmm. Because I can always make it... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's so nice to see, you know, a thousand backers on there. I'm getting into this weird thing where it's not so much about like one campaign. One campaign is like one campaign, a hundred thousand plus. It's like this is a new book that I sell forever. I sell it as add-ons. So should I shut this one down? Because these are well, the thing about these these are these are connected. They're like in the same mini universe. So I'm gonna keep this one open because first of all, buy is almost done. And then we're going to see the Kelsey Shannon cover, and that's going to make sales jump up. And then um, uh, Renzo's working on that. Then we're going to see it colored. So this one will get uh, developed over time. Actually, no, because the possibility with Jawbreakers Forever is I'm probably going to make it the same uh, shipping date, estimated shipping date of October of this year. But Jawbreakers Forever is, is it's done. It's not colored, but it's completely drawn. So, I mean, it's kind of close, but... Technically, I, I could maybe even get it out in September. I'm going to keep it as October, but <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so this one will stay up, but um, like there's a new Narzak book. Um, that's going to be only available as an add-on for Jawbreakers Forever, and then you can get the back catalog. You can get some of the Theosophy books. So yeah, so um, uh, one thing I'm always interested in is um, uh, comic book retailers, their take. Uh, I love to hear, you know, what people are actually selling, what people are actually buying, buying because again, these even back before Comicron was essentially useless because it was just guesstimates. Those weren't sales to customers; those were sales to stores. So, comic shop owners and employees, I am always interested in your take. Thanks for watching. Bye.